One of the more curious aspects of the brain is its ability to alter perception, to change the mind's view of reality. Amazingly, the brain can do this without much effort and through unusual means, such as this mushroom. The mushroom contains a hallucinogenic chemical called psilocin. In Mexico, there are shamans who consume these mushrooms. People who visit them believe the shamans can heal their physical and mental illnesses by affecting consciousness. During this spiritual or mystical experience, the two women are physically changing certain systems in their brains as they ingest the mushrooms. Within an hour, the two experience hallucinations in which they see brightly colored geometric patterns and strange spirits. The poet William Blake wrote in 1793, if the doors of perception were cleansed, the world would appear to man as it is, infinite. As we learn more about how the brain works, we learn too that the keys to these doors of perception are the brain's own chemicals. a giant chemical factory concocting molecules at different sites. These chemicals have done much to explain human behavior, personality, and perception. They live inside the brain cells, the neurons, whose branches connect and communicate with other cells. The chemicals are stored in sacs located at the end of a neural branch, the site of the synapse, the space where one neuron sends its message to the next. An electrical charge frees the chemical molecules from their holding tanks, and they make their way across the synapse to the connecting neuron. Neurons chatter constantly in their unique language of electricity and chemistry. There are a hundred billion of them in the brain, and they form thousands upon thousands of communication lines with other neurons. Neuron-to-neuron -neuron communication serves as the basis of all brain activity. It's a simple mechanism that when multiplied trillions of times becomes astonishingly complex. When a neuron fires off an electrical impulse, it travels down a fiber called the axon until it reaches the end of its line, where the chemical molecules are stored. The electrical blast starts the chemical transmissions. The molecules that cross the synapse bombard the receiving neuron, which has special receptors set up to bind with them, like a lock and key. The molecules that travel from one neuron to the next are called neurotransmitters. So far, we've identified about 50 of them in the brain. Substance P, noradrenaline, endorphins, dopamine. There could be many more. What researchers are finding out is that neurotransmitters modify and even shape human behavior. A few in particular are helping scientists understand the biological basis of sadness and joy, love and violence, and the way we see the world through a particular human spectrum. One of these is called serotonin. 
Serotonin is the brain's workhorse. It has different roles in different places throughout the brain. Among other things, it controls mood, appetite, memory, and learning. The hallucinations experienced by the shaman come by way of tampering with the serotonin system. Serotonin is unusual in that it can act as both an inhibitor and an enhancer, depending on where it is in the brain. In the case of hallucinations, serotonin acts in at least two important areas. In this PET scan image, these two areas are highlighted in red, the frontal lobes and the thalamus. The thalamus is the gateway of all sensory information. Everything we see, hear and touch arrives here before moving on to other areas of the brain. In a sense, the thalamus is like a valve controlling the flow of sensory information through the brain. Filtered information from the thalamus eventually travels to areas of the cortex for final processing. Much of that information makes its way to the frontal lobes. The frontal lobes are the brain's smart parts. They use the incoming information to make decisions, to plan. Serotonin can influence how the frontal lobes make these decisions by either helping or hindering the thalamus. Psychoactive drugs do the same thing. The psilocin in this mushroom is remarkably similar in molecular structure to serotonin. Inside the brain, the psilocin bonds well with the serotonin receptors. The red-colored psilocin takes serotonin's place at the receptor site, releasing the valve of the thalamus. The result, too many electrical signals reaching too many parts of the brain. It's thought that this information overflow, especially in the frontal lobes and the thalamus, eventually distorts sensory perceptions and creates hallucinations. Artists, by their very nature, look on the world in alternative ways. Alex Gray became familiar with the human body while taking anatomy courses at Harvard. As a young man, the artist also familiarized himself with LSD, like psilocin, LSD resembles serotonin in structure and bonds with serotonin receptors in the brain. For Alex, affecting the mind this way allowed him to move beyond his ordinary perspectives in unpredictable ways. And you can never exactly tell what's going to come, uh, especially if you do something like psychedelics, you know. There's an uncontrolled element about it, an uh, element of surprise, uh, of what the unconscious is capable of releasing. Much of his art shows recurring images, meant to convey the extraordinary interconnectedness humans have with the world. Alex physically, deliberately manipulated his brain. His visions come by way of simply altering one of its chemical systems. But the effects are profound and sobering, frightening for some, enlightening for others.